Okay, this is one part of a two-part tutorial that's going to show you how to make some interesting looking tetra packs, a little bit realistic, and put them into Illustrator, then Photoshop, and put all the labels on, the shadows, and everything to make it look really cool and sexy for maybe an advert you may be doing for uh, something. Okay, it's following on from two previous tutorials, how to use SketchUp for Illustrator and Photoshop. Now this is a little bit more detailed than the one I did in the last uh, tutorial, basically because I've beveled everything. Uh, I've also smoothed the cap off, as you notice. Okay, so what I'm going to do, and I've thickened the top bit because it has a thickness. Okay, so what I'm going to do is show you how to do all this and do the half size version of the uh, Tetra Pack inside SketchUp. I'm going to close that one. Start off with a new window. First things first, make a. I'm going to put it into parallel projection to start with. Okay, I'm going to literally make a square. You can tell it's a square because it has the dotted line going through it. Okay. Now let me just put this back into perspective mode because you need the axes switched on. Go to the corner. Let's see if I can do it so I can see what I'm doing first. Uh, what I need to do is just cut the corners off. So I'm going to do it on one surface first. Just zoom out see how big that is. It's not that big. That's about right. Okay. So I'm going to do is literally delete those two lines. Now the good thing about SketchUp, when you're in uh, this mode, is it snaps to grid. So if I switch the uh, pencil on again, what it's going to do is it's going to find the vertical. There you go, just see it? There, it's got the green line. So all I need to do literally is just to mark down there. And delete that. You'll notice that corner is exactly the same size as that corner. Cut. We could do it to all the surfaces. There you go again. Cut it across. Delete. And finally, the last one. Oops. It's going to do it on both surfaces, so I could choose either one. Okay. Do it on the diagonal. Like so. Now that's the uh, bottom section of the Tetra Pack made. So once I've done the zoom out, I can just orbit so it's in the right angle. All we need to literally do is just to pull it up slightly, not a lot, just enough to give the beveling distance. Okay, and whilst it's selected this uh, surface, we can just then resize it using the resize tool. Literally, just pull it out on all the axes. You may want to check the depth that it goes to by just uh, doing that. That's OK. Do it on the next surface here. Resize. Pull it out on that. OK. That might be a bit too much. Right. It snaps, so that's okay actually. Do on this surface. Snapping again. That snapping actually is I've showed you before is in the model info window. So you can disable it if you want to. Let's just, just finalize this and I'll just show you where it is. Okay, if you go to window model info uh, under units, it's got this enable length snapping and enable angle snapping. Okay, that's 15 degrees, that's why it's snapping at that angle. I can change that. Okay, but I'll keep it on at the moment because I didn't seem to have a problem earlier when I did a test or the one that you just saw. Okay, so that's the base done. Just, let's just orbit around again. What I've got to do obviously is to extend that to the size of a tetra pack. Like so, maybe a bit more. We're talking about a one litre one. Like so. That's about one litre. <laughs> okay, it's actually a tetra pack. 
what we need to do is now create the top section. So I'm just going to zoom in in here. Now the easiest way to do this is to get your pen tool, pencil tool, find the center point, create a line going up on the blue axis, roughly the size of the angle of the top surface. I don't. I'm just going to do a test. I don't really have a problem what size they are. Okay, like so. We'll just make sure we delete that line. Okay, don't delete that line. We need to delete this eventually. And what we're going to do is now rotate round and do exactly the same on this surface. Okay. And what we need to do is just find the center point again. If I move up, you'll notice it will snap when it gets to the there you go, the, the point where that joins there. We don't want to do that at the moment. We just want to make those surfaces again. Like so and like so. Okay, making sure we delete that. And now what we can do is just join that line to the top there. You notice it didn't fill these in because what we have, uh, which can seem like a problem, is this beveled surface which means that the angle isn't perpendicular so it's not going to actually connect everything together. So the way we resolve that is this way. I basically click on oops, press escape to stop the selection. Click on that endpoint and move it up until it actually creates a connection the same distance there. Do the same on this side, like so. Okay, and just press escape. And if we just zoom around the entire model, it still hasn't drawn the surfaces because we haven't done it to this side yet. As soon as I connect this to this, you will notice it fills that in. Okay, and we just do the same with this side. Don't worry about this surface as well at the moment. We're going to delete it just to, because I'm a finicky sod and I, I actually like perfecting everything as much as I can. So what I'm going to do here is just finish this off. So what we have is this surface complete and this surface complete. What we need to do is obviously flatten the top as well. Uh, the way we can do this is we don't need this surface anymore. So I'm going to get rid of the whole of that. Like so. Oops, we need the bottom base unit, sorry. And if I just quickly go in as far as I'm willing to go on the edge, horizontal, do that. Okay, and then just follow that line all the way to the other end. Like so. Okay. Emails. And just do the same on the other end. Like so. So just click on that point. Zoom out, move to the point where you want to connect, Oops. which is just there. Select the pencil again. Again, it's done it exactly as we did before. Now, what I'm going to do here is, uh, you may hear somebody drilling, somebody in my building. What I'm going to do is just... Delete this surface again, like we did the other side. 
Yep. And if I just zoom in and delete that and then those two, what should happen if I connect that up now is it should flatten it and go there. Okay. And quickly I'm just going to rotate round. Just check that I've deleted the lines from that top. And my zoom extenders are gone. There you go. Right, so don't need those. But you notice that surface has come back, so I'm going to delete. Oops, that's the it's the flat part. So what you should notice is it's like a tent. Okay, that's the first part done. If I just zoom in, what I can do quickly is to extrude that. Let's just see what a normal sized top to a tetra pack looks like. So it's about, let's say about there. Okay. And just uh, perfects a little bit of uh, the actual depth and thickness of a box. Yeah, you notice it's just got like a thickness there. What I'm going to do just to be really fussy about my design is I'm going to just literally curve those corners as well. Let's see. Uh, let's see. As soon as I delete those, I can then just complete that point. Like so, like so, and just do the same at the other end. I tend to think, you know, if you're going to do something right, you might as well try to make it look as great as possible. So that's one of the reasons I spend some time building these models up. So anyway, nearly completed this part. Like so. Okay. So that's the top part of our Tetra pack sorted. Apart from the little indent section. Now the way we do this let me just zoom in to there. You remember that beveling problem we had here because it didn't make the surface. We've got to basically draw a line to there to there. Like so. And you'll notice it then fills it in because it's seeing it as a correct geometry. So what I'm going to do here is just do the same. And it's going to obviously pop in exactly the same again delete that. Now whilst I'm here I'll do this side first. Okay. So what I'm going to do is just literally find the center point of the second line which is there and then draw a line inwards as much as I want the uh, the fold and then uh, a line up because uh, basically they come at an angle. Okay like so. Now I don't need escape Let's just delete that. I made a mistake by accidentally making a line. Now what we need to do is just literally connect those points up then between that one and that one and it should fill that gap in. Okay and again We've got to join that point up to that point, but you remember there's two there. It's not going to make a big problem. It's just going to make a slight beveling like it has there. So and everything's filled in. There's your indent for your tetra pack. All right, zoom out. I can now delete those two lines, which is cool. Actually, before I do that top one, I should try to make a. We need to do it on the red axes. Yeah, so I know where the height of the second point on the opposite side is going to be. Okay. So again, find the center point. 
go back as much as I want. Go up like so, and now I can delete that. I can actually delete that first as well. Right, so we're basically going from that point to that point, and from that point to that point. And you can tell it's all connected because it does that. And the same here. So we're just going to join those up again and the same down to there. Okay, so we've got our Tetra pack looking quite, well, dare I say, sexy. Okay, looks like a little Tetra pack, I suppose. Yeah, now what you could do if you wanted to just be really picky is just, oops, is just hide that. Just delete that surface there, and if you wanted to hide that one, get rid of that that line. Yeah, you could do, and just uh, just unhide all of them, so it's all back to normal. Okay. Now I want to have the shadow going off this direction, so I'm just going to add the shadow. So I, uh, you see, so what I've got to do is put the cap on this surface here. Okay, so that's where I'm going to be. Let's just see if we can just play with so. Yeah, so I've got a bit more light on this side. Doesn't really matter because uh, I'm going to do all the lighting inside Illustrator. Anyway, <coughs> before I uh, do the cap, I'm going to make that into a group. Okay, so that's a one group. Now, making the cap, what we can do, which makes life easier, because we're just going to use the circle. If you find the center point down here, yeah, what it does is it allows you then draw draw a line. Okay, I don't know, it does it the same there. Now you see, it only does it on that angle for some reason. I've got to judge where that is and then draw the circle for the cap, okay, which is like that. As you can remember, we did the uh, beveling. I've got to do the same rough thing here. So don't worry about that, it's just because it's fli flitting onto a surface. This is the first part of the cap, which has a slight uh, raised element, so it's got to be. Oops, picked the wrong bit. That one. So it's got to be basically pulled in quite a lot on the different angles. Like so. Make sure it's roughly the same on each surface. That's the last one. So, and what it does is basically, if you look at it at a certain angle, oops, I did it wrong, didn't I? Let's start from the beginning again. Basically, you have to just do it on the uh, if I just zoom around now, it's just creating that kind of oops. That last one's not worked well. Like so. And what it's doing is just creating that lower bevel that you have on a Tetra pack. Okay. Now, just zoom in again. Just. I mean, I don't want to. No. Did it wrong. What I want to do first is just to make the cap slightly. Oops, not making it to the right surface, is it? Alright. Is there any reason for that? No. Let's just select that surface. Okay, it's just going to make it slightly smaller than the actual uh, main bottom connection unit. Okay, I'm just going to then select that face, extrude it up to the size of a cap, like so. Now, the problem here is you can't do the same effect as you've done there. Um uh, don't know why. Uh but anyway what I'm gonna have to do is just to make a uh, extrusion let's do it again. Undo like so and then just raise this up to the size of uh, an extrusion. 
and then this is the interesting part I'm just going to literally delete that and that surface and that what you got here is a big gap okay now what you need to do is literally find the endpoints for each of the connections don't need to do that make sure you endpoints and it creates a facet then like so you just got to work your way around the whole cap making sure you then connect all the endpoints together make sure you're saying it's endpoints not midpoints or something or face okay it's got to be the endpoints like so So many times I'm quite used to. Oh shit, that was. Oops, I shouldn't use swear words, but anyway. Okay, so that's our cap finalised. Okay. So, now you notice already that my uh, cap's uh, smooth there, okay? It's not smooth there though, okay? What I'm going to do quickly though is just select it all, make it into a group again. As soon as you make it into a group, you can go here and then go to soften edges, okay? What I can do is that, and then just reduce this down a little bit. You notice if I do it, it shows all the facets. And as soon as I start doing this, it starts removing the facets and smooths the edges. And what we really want to do is to get that smooth, that smooth, and that smooth. Once you're happy with all that, it's not doing it to this group, by the way. That's why you make them into separate groups. Okay. What we're going to do is leave it like that. Okay. And there's your Tetra Pack, basically. Uh, looks quite nice, looks realistic. So what I'm going to do quickly is just to make that into a component. Like so, I'll call it Tetra Pack. Create. Okay, and there's your component. Now I'm just going to rotate to the front because I did this earlier. You notice that that surface is not uh, equal from that distance there to that distance there because obviously I couldn't judge what it was. I'm going to leave it to the time being because I want to show you a little trick that you could do. Say, for instance, you copy this. Yeah, and then you move it over here. Oops, like that. Let's just rotate it around. And then you and you place it here behind. And you want to rotate it as well to make it look really I shouldn't have done it like that. I should have done it on the model. I'm being a bit lazy. Like that. So you want to rotate it to make it look more dynamic and then move it behind again, like so. Okay, so say for instance you've done this, and then you realise that you've got the cap in the wrong place, it needs to be moved over slightly. What you can do, which is really neat, uh, is to edit the component, select your group, okay, and you notice the one behind has been selected as well. Let's just move down so you can see that. Okay. And what you can do is just alter it on one of them and it alters it on the other one. Yeah. Which is really cool. So you don't have to worry about making everyone perfect as long as you keep them uh like that. Okay, so we've got two big ones. Now we want to make the third uh small one. Simply copy our component again, just put it next to it for the time being. Now because I've done this beveling, I can't literally uh, 
re-extrude the bottom up because uh, it's going to make a mess. So what I've got to do is a quick different way uh, which is uh, edit component then edit group like so. Luckily what you can do is while it's in this uh, this is what I've got to tell you first, I forgot to tell you. You notice it's selected them all again. There is an option here, it's called make unique. Okay, now that one's not going to be affecting the other ones. So as soon as I do that and then I edit group, if I select that surface, you notice none of the other ones are done. So what I can do now is just literally move this up on that surface until I'm happy that it's around about like a half size one. Let's just rotate around so it's not made a mess on any other surface and zoom in so that the bevel is correct. Okay. That's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is to just use the move tool instead of the resize tool. But that's going to move the actual planer as well, you see. Now, the way I did it earlier, which takes a little bit of time, is I need to just dis deselect yeah, all the angles and elements that I don't want to move. That's the nice thing about SketchUp. When you move connected parts, it basically reconfigures the actual other elements as well. Just get to the last one. Like so, so all I've got selected is the base elements and the bevel. So if I now move it, move it on the blue surface, you notice it's not distorting the rest of the model. Okay, which it did before. Okay, so once I'm happy with the size of a uh, small tetra but let's say that's okay I'm not doing it perfectly okay like so and then just finally reduce that down to so it's uh, sitting on the ground oops snapped a bit odd Okay, that's on the ground. Just bring it up. I just want to rotate it a little bit because we don't want it on the same plane as the other one. So just do that. Twist it this way a little bit. And there you have your three cool looking tetra packs with shadows, etc. Okay, so what I'm going to do in the next uh, tutorial is to show you how to bring those into Illustrator and make them even more cool and sexy. Uh, and hopefully then put them into Photoshop and place them into a scene. Okay, so watch out for the next tutorial or you can look at some other tutorials on my blog. Okay.